we have our Isodontia mexicana which hunt, hunts uh, immature katydids uh, or copperforing grasshoppers. You can see them there uneaten. So there are actually three eggs laid. One has developed here, this one has failed to develop, and this one has developed. And these may be just leftover food from this first part, from this first one. The partitions are quite weak, but you'll see little, little bits of walls of um, grasses going across. Uh, if there's no partition, the larvae live with each other quite happily. They don't, they don't eat each other. Potter wasps will eat each other if you put, them, put two of them together. The potter wasp nest next to it, the Ancestroceras type. Uh, another uh, spider, another uh, catered is. Um, provisioning wasp, the Isodontia mexicana, another one of the same thing. Notice these plugs are quite long and they're also vertical straws uh, poking at the ends. These were much more uh, florid uh, before the nest blocks received so much attention. And they prevent Osmilignaria, the bee we saw earlier, from digging out the nest. Um, there, there are conflicts between uh, the Isodontia and the Osmilignaria over space. So the Osmilignaria are very rapacious and they'll actually dig these out. If there's protruding straws, the Osmilignaria don't seem to manage to do it. If it's just this cross wall, Osmilignaria can do it. What are they making the walls out of? Uh, cut grasses or sedges. Okay. Uh, uh, and over here we have uh, a spider wasp, uh, Tripoxylon latitas. Um, which you can identify competently from the shape of its cocoons. And its cocoons are quite different because they're varnished to give them this nice black colour. They look like um, something made out of chocolate or machined or something almost. They're so exact. But it's actually uh, varnished mm. silk. And um, these species, uh, being wasps that eat, eat large prey, they come out a little bit. They don't come out at the very first moment in spring. They come out when they're, they're a prey for them to catch. So when you say varnish, are you talking about resin? Yes, yeah, this would be something secreted by the spinning grub. So the, the grub, not, not, not a resin from trees, but some uh, material that the, the grub is secreting from, say, mandibular glands or some other glands in its body. And that's mud that's in between those? These, these are mud walls in between, yes. Are any of these using resin that we see in front of us? In no, we have, we have some in, uh, in another stack. So here you can see um, a variety of nests. Actually, there's a leafcutter bee starting to try to emerge there. Wow. It's behind a, a new Osmia cocoon and uh, it so it's escaping because we've taken the lid off but uh, in nature it would either um, die being unable to get into the, the very tough cocoon or else it would succeed uh, and die within the cocoon or else it might be just lucky enough to get all the way through the cocoon and emerge successfully. So n here we have um, resin using bees uh, uh, Megachili um, Campanulae and uh, these I'm guessing are last year's. This yeah. emerging wasp is actually a parasitic wasp oh. or parasitic bee actually. Uh, Celioxus are a group of megachylid bees that are parasitic on other bees and wasps and uh, usually uh, each parasite can only invade a limited number of species. And they're parasites so, because they're eating the, the the food that was already laid. Yes. So this 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 parasitoid will have overwintered with the other leafcutter bees. And it's going and, to eat their and, food. And it's eaten their food already, the and uh, probably eaten the larva. And that's pollen. Uh, that's leftover pollen that perhaps the cell in front of the leaf or in front of the parasite died and never developed. And is going to eat also grubs, you say? I thought these guys were vegetarian because they're bees. No, no. The, 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 um, well, I don't. I, I don't know. They. I don't know if they eat the grub or not. It would be ah, surprising if it yeah. didn't. If it right. was to ignore that possibility. Right. But certainly they eat the provisions. So just to go over it again, um, I'm, I believe, I'm guessing, because I don't have my records, these are three cells of leafcutter bees from last year. This one didn't develop, so it's full of pollen. I'm assuming that the uh, Celioxis bee came out of one of these other two cells, and it's possible that there's another cell of with a leafcutter bee in it. Of course, it may not be. Just to flip back 
to what you were saying about the resin using bees over here. Yeah, that's, that's quite remarkable because the um, resin which would come from plants or trees, I don't know which plants or which trees, would be carried by the female in her mandibles as a little ball of liquid resin. resin. And then she would then build the wall up uh, one tiny drop at a time without somehow getting stuck in, stuck up in the process. No. But in fact, other other bees can do that. Even, um, even honeybees uh, in the tropics mm. are reported to collect liquid paint and take it back to their, their nests. Uh, not the ordinary type of honeybee necessarily, but uh, right, tro another tropical kind. bees. Um, actually, you're probably talking even maybe about uh, tropical bees that are um, not apis, but they're another they're family. They're probably melat mel uh, they might be melatoma or they might be trigona yeah. or I need to look it up. Perhaps it's another bee altogether. But uh. Do you know in this case uh, if the, if the, the resin uh, was taken from particular plants, like willows? Yeah, I said I, I don't know what plants that would be. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if it is known. But it is gathered and not secreted. It's, it's gathered, yes. Yeah. yeah. So then the Celioxus flew away.